Welcome to part six of Learning Godot. In this video, we're going to look at a few extra things you might want to add to the game to make it a little bit more appealing. If you followed along with the previous steps, you have a working game and you can dodge the enemies, staying alive as long as you can until one hits you, and everything works great. But it's a little drab and not very exciting, and so this video is going to cover some things you can do to spice it up a little bit and make the game look nicer. And the first thing we could do is replace this default gray background, which is kind of drab. And one way we could do that is by adding a color rect. That's a rectangle that will display a solid color. Pretty straightforward. We're going to drag that and cover up everything. Now, if we leave it here, the nodes are drawn in order. So that means the color rect is going to be drawn on top of our player, so we won't be able to see them. So we're going to put that at the top of the stack so that we can see the player. And I'm going to name this background. And in the color rect inspector properties, you just click here to pick a color. So let's see, let's pick a, maybe we're underwater, we'll pick a bluish color. Let's see how that looks. And there we go. If instead you had a texture, an image that you wanted to use there, you could use a texture rect, which does the same kind of thing as the color rect. It just displays a texture and it can do things like tiling and stretching and things like that. If you have a particular image you want to use and you want to make it fit on the screen. So that's the background. The next big thing we could do is add some sound to this game. In your art folder, there are two sounds that we can use. There's a game over WAV file. That's something we want to play when the player dies. And then there's an AUG file that's a bit of background music we can play during gameplay to give us some atmosphere. So what we want to do is have those working in our main. So in main, we're going to add two audio stream player nodes. So I'm just going to add one and then duplicate it. Now this first one is going to be our game over sound. I'm going to call it the death sound. And right here for stream, we want to load from our art file the game over wave file. And you can try it out if you hit playing. You can hear it play. And so we want to trigger that playing when the game is over. So if we go to our mains script, then on game over, that's where we want to have it happen. So we can just add here death sound dot play. And that should make it play that sound when we run into something. Okay. And then the second audio stream player is going to be our music. And we'll load that AUG file. And now we want to go back to our script and we want to start playing that music when the game starts. So in the new game function, we're going to tell it to play the music. And in the game over, we're going to add that we want it to stop. So we want to stop playing the music when the game ends. Now, when you import an AUG file, if I click on this and go up to the Import tab, it should be set to loop automatically. Make sure that's set because that way when it reaches the end of the music clip, it'll automatically start playing it again. So let's try that out now. And there's our background music playing. And when I get hit, it stops. The next effect we're going to add is I would like the player to have a bit of a trail behind him when he moves. And to do that, we're going to use a particle node. So it's called the Particles 2D. And I'm going to name that Trail. Now when you create a Particle 2D, you get an error message because it needs a material attached to a 
process of particles, and we'll get to that in a second. But first we're going to look at the properties here in the inspector. Emitting, whether or not the particles are coming out. The number that you want, I'm going to set that to 10. Under time, we're going to leave these as they are. Actually, we might up the speed scale a little bit. We'll see how it looks. Setting up particles also requires a bit of trial and error. There's a lot of settings and a lot of different ways you can make it look. And so you can experiment and get a huge number of different effects out of it. Now here under textures, we're going to use the player's texture. So I'm going to grab the player texture and I'm going to stick it there. Now it's showing up there because our, remember our texture is really big. We, when we drew the player, we shrunk him down. And we're going to take care of that in the particles material. But here, it's also showing on top of my player. So I'm going to go down to the visibility, and I'm going to check the show behind parent. That way, the trail will look like it's coming out from behind the player, not from on top of it. All right, now we need to animate these particles and have them do something. And that's done with this process material. So if you click the arrow here, you can create a shader. If you're familiar with writing shaders, you can write a shader to do this. But we're going to use a particles material. And now all of a sudden we've got some particles dropping down, because by default the particles have gravity on them and they just fall down. So we're going to have to change that around. So click on the material, and now you have a, a huge list of properties that you can tweak and adjust for this. But we definitely want to take gravity and set it to zero so that those things stop falling. We want to take our scale, and the scale is what we're going to want to change. We want it to, we want them to start out the size of the player, or maybe a little bit smaller, and then shrink from there. So what we're going to do is make a scale curve. So I'm going to click the down arrow here and say new curve texture. Click on that, and now I have this curve that I can draw. And I want it to start around just under 0.5, because that's the scale that we set our player to. And I want it to end up down around 0 or so. OK. And now we can't see them, because they're appearing behind the player and then shrinking. But that's OK. We're going to make them show. They're going to show up when we move. Now I'm going to hit the back arrow here to get back to the particles material. I also want them to fade out, so I'm going to make a color ramp here. So a new gradient texture, I click on that. For the gradient, I want a new gradient, and I click on that. And now down here are the colors that we're going to go between. So it's starting with black and going to white. Well, what I want to do is click on that first square. I don't need to move it. And I'm going to click on what color. And I want to start out white. That starts out being the original color, no change to the color. But we are going to fade it a little bit. So we're going to start it around there, say. And then the ending color is going to be also white, but with the alpha all the way down. Because we want it to basically look like it's fading out. And so now we're ready to try it out. Let's see if we have all the settings the way we want them. Well, let's try it out and see what happens. Oh, I know what happened. We don't see them because we have to let them stream out behind the player. So we're going to go to the trail. And in drawing, we're going to uncheck local coordinates. We don't want the particles to stay attached to the player. We want them to stream out behind him. So if I move the player around, actually, you can see the trail right there in the editor going behind it as it moves. All right. Now that should do better. There we go. Now we have a little trail coming out behind us. Now if you want to get fancier with this, we're always using the same texture. So it does look a little odd that the 
facing to the right texture comes out when we move in other directions. It also continues to emit when we're standing still. So if we happen to stand still on a frame where our pose isn't the same, we're going to see it. And so a couple things we can do about that. I've just gone into the player's script and I've added two commands here. I've added to set emitting to true when we're moving and set emitting to false when we stop moving on the trail. And that's going to look a little better when you let go of the key and stop moving. If I stop, for example, like that, you don't see any particles coming out behind the character. The possibilities for particles are pretty much endless and way more than we could go into for this video, but hopefully that inspires you with some ideas. You could also do things like bubbles coming up from the bottom if you want to continue the underwater theme. Uh, you could put it in space and have uh, flickering stars in the background. You could add some trails or effects to the enemies as well. Hopefully that gives you some ideas as well. Thank you for watching and good luck in your future Godot projects.